Okay, so we've covered all of the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions for this chapter. The next thing we need to do is determine how to predict which carbon on an aromatic ring will react if we have more than one substituent coming off of the ring. So in order to do that, I have this list of priorities. So number one in my priorities list is to identify each substituent as an ortho para or meta director, and then label each one. If there's a tie, then I go to step two, and then I say that the strongest activator will win out. And then if there's still a tie after that, then I say that the most accessible position will win, meaning the least sterically crowded carbon. All right, I already have a lot of these problems pre-drawn for you, but if you need to, feel free to pause the video and then work through your notes. All right, but let's get going here. In the first compound, I've got this methyl group up here. A methyl group is a weak activator, and because of that, it's going to be an ortho para director. The ortho positions relative to the methyl group would be right here and right here. And then the para position is already occupied by that nitro group, therefore, we can't use that. All right, so I'll erase that, and then we'll go to the nitro group. Down here, the nitro group is a meta director, and meta to that nitro group would be right here and right here. So when we're determining relative positioning, we're always referencing it to the substituent itself. So for example, meta to the nitro group is where the green arrows are pointed, which is different than meta to that methyl group. Okay, so it seems quite clear if we were to do bromination that we would favor reacting at one of these two carbons. In this case, it doesn't really matter because it would give you the exact same product, whether or not it reacted with the left one or the right one. So I'll just go ahead and draw one of them right there. And we could predict that this would be our major product. All right, so now let's jump into a harder example. In this next example, we've got an alcohol, which again is going to be an ortho or a para director. We've got an ortho position right here. Para is blocked. And then the ortho position on the other side is also blocked. So we can't use either of those. So I'm just going to erase them. And then I'll jump to my nitro group right here. Nitro group we know is a meta director. And meta to the nitro group would be right there or right there. But that's already blocked by the methyl group. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. And then next, we can go ahead and we can say this methyl group is going to be an ortho or a para director since it's a weak activator. And we've got an ortho position right here, para position right here. And then this other ortho position relative to that methyl group is already occupied, so we can't use that. So we can see that there's not clear, there's not a clear answer here, right? We've got the red and green arrow pointing to one carbon, and then the purple arrows pointing to another carbon. So we have to go to our tiebreaker. We said if there's a tie, the strongest activator is going to determine the regiochemistry. So in this case, we've got two activators. We have this alcohol right here that's an activator. And then we also have this methyl group right here that's also an activator. Well, which is stronger? Well, in this case, we know the alcohol is going to be substantially stronger than the methyl group. So then the alcohol is going to win out, which means that its arrow is going to be the tiebreaker. So we can go ahead and we can predict that when we do this reaction, that the position indicated by the red arrow is going to be the one to be brominated. So I would go ahead and put my bromine right there. All right, let's do one last one, a little bit trickier for this one. So in this situation, we've got a methyl group. This methyl group is an ortho para director. And then over here, um, I'll do this in blue. This is also an ortho para director. So let's go ahead and label all of these. So let's go with the methyl group. The methyl group has ortho positions that are open right there and a para position that's open right there. The isopropyl group also has ortho positions right there and then a para position right there. So as you can see, there's at least consistency. However, we don't have a stronger activator. They're both alkyl groups, they're gonna be about the same. 
So that leads us to our third tiebreaker. If there's still a tie, then the least crowded carbon, meaning the most accessible carbon, is going to win. So if we look up here, this carbon is pretty dang crowded, right? It's in between a methyl group and an isopropyl group, so that seems unlikely. Then if we compare the two remaining carbons, we've got this position over here next to the isopropyl group, and then this position over here, which is next to the methyl group. In this case, I would say the position next to the methyl group is going to be a lot less crowded than the position next to the isopropyl group. So let's go ahead and clearly label this in our notes. And then we'll just say that this position is least crowded. All right, so if we do the bromination, it should end up coming off of this carbon right here. And this would be our major product. All right, so that hopefully explains the order of priorities. And as you can see, we only use the tiebreaker rules if we really have to. All right, so there's one other thing I briefly wanted to touch on, and that has to do with steric effects, specifically as it relates to ortho versus para. So let's take a look at what I mean here. When do you pick ortho versus para? All right, so let's take a look at some experimental examples. And I'm going to do two of them. And we'll just stack them so that we can compare. So in this first example, we're going to use toluene, also known as methylbenzene. And in our second example, we're going to use tert-butylbenzene. All right, so as you can tell, these are both starting materials that have these ortho-para directors, since they're both alkyl groups, right? So we're going to favor the ortho or the para position on either of these. OK. So let's see what happens if we do the same reaction. So if we treat the top one with elemental bromine and iron tribromide, we might get reactivity at both sites. So I'll go ahead and do ortho here. And then on this one, I'll do para right there. So that's one option. We could have the same sort of thing happen with this lower reaction. So let's go ahead and draw out both options. And so when we run these, in a lab setting, we can actually look at our products and ask ourselves, well, which one's major and which one's minor? And in the top reaction, we find that this is going to be the major product. And then on the lower reaction, we find that this is our major product. So then the question is, well, why? Why in the first reaction is the ortho substitution favored? And why in the lower reaction is the para substitution favored? Well, let's dig into this and try to come up with a theory that supports these observations. All right, so first things first, if I look at this top reaction, one could argue that we have twice as many orthocytes as we do parasites. So we can go ahead and say that statistically, that there are two times as many ortho positions. Basically implying that it's more likely to react at one of those positions. It would be twice as likely if we were just following statistics. This also implies that the steric effects from this methyl group are small.
Therefore, sterics aren't really dissuading that ortho product from being formed. This is true for other small activating groups like alcohols, things like that, but really anything much larger than a CH3 group wouldn't um, fall into this category. All right, so let's compare this to what we're seeing down below. Down below, we'd say that this is major because the activator is large and blocks the ortho position. All right, so I know this gets a little confusing, so let's just write a simple note here. So activators larger than a CH3 or a methyl group tend to favor para substitution. It doesn't mean that you exclusively get para substitution. It just means that that will be your major product. All right. So then the question is, well, what if we really, really wanted to isolate this product, meaning the ortho substitution product and not the para substitution product? Well, if we want to do that, we have to be a little bit tricky. So let's move on to the next topic, which involves using blocking groups in order to favor correct product formation. All right, so let's kind of rehash what we just covered. We just said if we have terp-butyl benzene, that it is really, really hard to favor the ortho substitution product, right? Because of that steric crowding. So even if we tried to do this using the correct reagents, our yield would be incredibly low. So it's not really worthwhile. And it's interesting, right? If we think about this, this is an ortho para director. So it's gonna favor reactions at one of these positions. However, the ortho position is just simply too crowded to really react if that para position is open. But what we can do is we can install something on that para position, specifically, we can treat it with H2SO4 and sulfur trioxide. That's our fuming sulfuric acid. And if we do that, we're gonna get the sulfonic acid group to install off the para position. Again, reiterating the fact that that's the most accessible position, it definitely doesn't wanna go in that ortho position. So now when we look at this, we'd still say that this is ortho and para directing. So it's going to favor these ortho sites, but now that para group is blocked. And then down here we can say, well, the sulfonic acid is a meta director, which is going to favor these two positions. So now if we do the same reaction as above with the bromine and the iron tribromide, the only site that's available is going to be one of these ortho sites. Doesn't matter if you pick the left or the right one it's going to give you the exact same product. And then in order to remove this sulfonic acid group to get to our final product, if you remember, you can just treat this with dilute sulfuric acid, meaning sulfuric acid and water. If you add that in, that sulfonic acid group will pop off and you can get to your desired product. So this is a pretty useful trick when planning out syntheses. All right, so we're gonna stop right there. And then when we come back, we'll delve into doing some synthesis practice problems.